Hi everybody, it's Sean from Mosaic here in Palm Bay, Florida. It is noon on Tuesday, April the 21st, and I want to welcome you to our, to our bi-weekly devotional. I'm glad you're with us today. I hope that you're doing well. I've, um, I'm praying for you. Uh, even if I don't know who you are that's on here right now, I want you to know that I am, I am praying for you. And uh, if I see that you come on, anytime we check the analytics on our videos, if I see your name come up, I pray for you and I pray for your family. And if you have special prayer needs, please put them in the comments section here on these little videos and we'll, we'll make sure that we, we pray specifically for your needs. Uh, today is going to be really scaled down, really scaled back. I don't have Sandra with me today. She's working up, up at the church, and um, uh, I didn't want to do too much today anyhow, and you'll see why as we get into the, into the heart and the meat of this little devotional today. Uh, so no song today and a very limited time together. I'm not going to uh, spend an awful lot of time with you. I just want to carve out maybe five to seven minutes here with you and talk about a practice that you can begin to implement in your life that I know will be very, very meaningful for you. And um, if we practice this, I'm telling you, this is this can be a game changer for all of us. Um, so I hope you can see the screen. We're, we're talking about spiritual disciplines in, in these bi-weekly messages. We felt like it was really a great time while we're quarantined, while we're isolated, while we don't have a lot of uh, places we can go and things that we can do that we can talk about ways that we can practice certain spiritual disciplines in our life and I, I, I go back and forth on the word discipline or practice I'm, I'm good with either one of them discipline sounds painful to me though um, and sometimes they are painful and this one might be really painful to you today depending on who you are and what your personality type is but we've been talking about spiritual disciplines and talking about how this is a great time for us to implement some practices in our lives that are going to help us grow spiritually and um, and be you know be better uh, disciples. This is what we're we're going for. So this is a great time for us to consider that. And today, here's what, what I want to talk about: the spiritual discipline of silence and solitude. Now I know some of you just went, oh no, right? And some of you went, yes. It depends on who you are. Uh, if you're an introvert like me, I'm an introvert, and introverts really, you know, the, the difference between introvert and extrovert is where do you get your energy from? And for introverts, we get our energy from being alone. We get our energy from reading and studying and being quiet and being away from people. Not that we don't like people. We like being with people. And we need to be with people, but we get our energy when we're alone. Extroverts get their energy from being around people. And so extroverts are going crazy right now. Extroverts are losing their minds. My wife, Sandra, is an extrovert. She is losing her mind. She's doing, she's doing great. She's keeping herself busy. But man, uh, she really needs that interaction and to be with people. So this is really an important mm -hmm. discipline, though. So if you're an introvert, this might come a little easy for you. And i got to tell you, this, uh, I, I always thought silence and solitude would be really easy for me mm -hmm. until uh, about four years ago I decided to take a monastic retreat and go to a monastery up in North Georgia and spend three days in a monastery with monks, not talking, not doing any interacting really. And um, it was interesting. I was able to make it for about a day and a half. And then I snuck out and went to the closest coffee shop because uh, I was I was going a little stir crazy. So, um, but if you uh, if you're an extrovert, this is really going to be a little bit more difficult. So let me share a couple of scriptures with you um, to talk about why this is important. In First Kings chapter 19, we read this story. The Lord said, and this is a, a story about a guy named Elijah. The Lord said to Elijah, "Go out and stand at the mountain before the Lord. The Lord is passing by." A very strong wind tore through the mountains and broke apart the stones before the Lord, but the Lord wasn't in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. After the fire, there was a sound. Some translations say a whisper, thin, quiet. When Elijah heard it, please take note of that. He had to be paying careful attention to hear the still small voice, the whisper, the sound. He wrapped his face in his coat. He went out and stood at the cave's entrance, and a voice came to him and said, Why are you here, Elijah? 
Notice that Elijah couldn't hear God's voice until he got very quiet, until he got all the noise out of the way and really listened to that, that sound, thin, quiet, a whisper. Do you have some time in your day, every day, where you can take enough time to listen to the whisper, to listen to the sound, the thin, quiet sound of God? Because it's in those quiet moments, in those silence, those times of silence uh, and solitude where we get away from everything that we can really hear God. Another passage from the New Testament, this comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 31 to 32. Before we ended up going into quarantine, we were studying the Gospel of Mark every Wednesday night uh, in our Bible study, and it was getting good. We were really enjoying it. But what we found is that, man, Jesus is constantly himself and with his disciples trying to find time to get away, to go, Mark calls it a lonely place sometimes, you know, that place where there's no... Uh, activity and no busyness. This uh, particular passage says many people were coming and going so there was no time to eat and he said to the apostles come by yourself to a secluded place and rest for a while. Man that, it, maybe Jesus is just saying that to you today. Come by yourself to a secluded place and rest for a while. They departed in a boat by themselves for a deserted place. I don't know where that place is for you. You know, uh, we're all confined to our homes right now, but I'm telling you, I, I feel like it's busier in our house now than it was before we were quarantined, right? There's, there's a lot more activity going on. There's a lot of stuff happening technologically. The TV's on, the music's playing, the computer's going. There's so much busyness. And so much stuff going on. And if we're not careful, we will fill every single moment of our day and our night with sound. Some of you can't go to sleep without sound, right? You got to have something on. You can't go to sleep without the lights on and the music playing. And, um, and this is why sometimes when we gather together as a church and we say, let's pray. And the preacher doesn't begin to pray right away. You ever notice that moment, how awkward that is? That people are kind of shuffling around going, please say something. This, this silence is, is deafening. It's too much. But what we discover in Scripture over and over and over again is this absolute need for rest and silence and solitude and going away quietly somewhere. Maybe it's the beach for you, right? If you're here in Florida uh, and you can get out and take a walk on the beach quietly somewhere, maybe that's it for you. Um, maybe it's a special room in your house. I don't know, maybe it's just going in the car and driving and turning the radio off and just listening, right? Um, very quickly, I want to give you uh, just a few benefits of silence and solitude and then we'll quit. Uh, I got this from an article on, uh, on the internet. Um, Outreach Magazine, I think, posted this. Uh, information about silence and solitude. It's a good article and I, I just took some of these directly from that article. Uh, benefits of silence and solitude. It breaks the power of hurry in our lives. When we take the time to just get, get quiet, and when we take the time to go away by ourselves somewhere, it just immediately eliminates the need for hurry. We don't have to rush all the time. We, don't have, we are not that important, okay? It renews our souls, right? When you get quiet and you just settle down and you take some deep breaths and you just focus your heart and your mind on God and listening, your soul is renewed. You can get up from that and get going again. It reminds us that life will go on without us. Right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to continue. Things are going to keep happening. It clears the mind for wise decision-making and planning. You ever wonder why you can't make good decisions or why you can't plan effectively? It's because you're rushed all the time, because you're trying to you know, ride through and get through all these decisions and make them on the, on the fly and... Jesus was constantly pulling himself quietly away to the quiet place so that he can make those decisions. Before he selected his disciples and made some important decisions, he always took time to be quiet and to go away. It creates inner space to hear the voice of God, just like we saw in the story from Elijah. In order for us to really hear God, sometimes it takes just being quiet. And then lastly, it helps us 
with the other disciplines. If you want to pray more or better, if you want to read your Bible more often, getting quiet and being alone somewhere is going to help you in those disciplines. So these are really, really good tips for us in, in terms of why this is important. So I just want to encourage you today, okay? Um, maybe this afternoon, early evening, whatever it is, carve out some time. And when, I, when we talk about silence, it, I mean silence. Don't, don't put your headphones on. Um, don't listen to music. Sometimes really quiet music can be helpful, but sometimes it can be distracting too. Silence is just sitting quietly, listening to the birds chirp, listening to the sounds around you, but ultimately listening for that still small voice of God speaking to your heart. And um, I guarantee you what you're going to hear if you listen carefully is that you are my beloved son or daughter in whom I'm well pleased. You're going to hear God say to you, I love you, and I'm going to get you through this, and I'm going to be with you every step of the way. And those are encouraging words that, man, we just all need to hear right now, isn't it? So I want to encourage you. Take some time for silence and solitude. It may be painful for you. It may be hard to do. Maybe something you don't want to do, but you can make it happen, and it can make a big, big difference in your life. Would you pray with me? So God, we thank you for this reminder to us that silence and solitude are so incredibly important. Help us to tune out the sounds that are all around us and the, the noise, the talking heads, the politics, the conspiracy theories, even the uplifting stories, even though they're good for us sometimes, and the times where we, we, we read or, or hear something that makes us laugh, those are very important. But God, there, there are even times where we've got to tune all that out. And like Elijah on that mountain, re remember that you're not in the loud noises. You're in the stillness. You're in the quiet. And so I pray for my brothers and sisters today that for my introvert friends, you'll help us to... Uh, take advantage of this time and to, and to enjoy the peace and the quiet and the solitude that we can find in the silence. And for my extroverted friends, boy, I just pray you'll give them the ability to do this because I know it's hard for them, but it's going to be so helpful. So God, I love you and I thank you and I praise you for all my friends that are watching and that will watch this today. Be with us, guide us, and lead us through this day and give us time for silence and solitude. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can keep in touch with us. Call us, email us, follow us on Facebook uh, for updates, and keep us in your prayers. We, we are praying for you. Pray that you'll be praying for us as well. God bless you, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.